late 1840s, gold flecks were discovered at Sutter's Mill in Colomo, California, which spurred a sequence of events we now know as the California Gold Rush. Men flocked to the Golden State with the hope of striking it rich. Among them, thousands of Chinese immigrants who brought with them their culture and religions. Despite the fact that the influence of Asian philosophies on Western culture can be traced further back than the mid-19th century, it was during this time that Buddhism firmly planted itself on American shores. Chinese Buddhism would stay the most prominent of these traditions in America for a number of decades. However, in the late 1890s and early 20th century, the Japanese population and influence on the United States began to grow. The participation of Shaku Soen at the World Parliament of Religion, which was held in conjunction with the Chicago World's Fair in 1893, sparked interest in Japanese Zen Buddhism, and as the 20th century progressed, Americans seemed especially intrigued with these schools, such as Rinzai and Soto, which are branches of the Mahayana vehicle. The Rinzai lineage was established in America in the earlier 1900s, with Soto Buddhism appearing in the 1950s. The Soto school took root, and in less than a decade, Japanese-born Soyu Matsuoka Roshi and Shunyu Suzuki Roshi had respectfully established the Chicago Buddhist Temple and the San Francisco Zen Center. The Soto lineage joined the diverse landscape of Buddhist sects in the States and has continued to thrive into the present day. Additionally, while less than seven decades old, Soto Zen in the United States has developed a flavor that is uniquely American, evolving in reaction to new cultural surroundings, a characteristic not uncommon to Buddhism during its vast history. In conjunction with the aforementioned San Francisco Zen Center, which opened in 1962. Shunyu Suzuki Roshi also opened the Tassajara Zen Mountain Center in 1967, which was the first Soto Zen monastery to be officially established outside of Asia. In opening these centers, his desire was to bring the Zen Dharma to a new American audience, as he felt that Zen practice in Japan had become stiff and repetitive. The landscape of America in the 1950s and 60s was especially alluring to Sunyu Suzuki as well as the other teachers who introduced Soto Buddhism to America due to a social and political landscape which grew a generation that was largely disillusioned with materialism and the religions of their youth. These Soto Zen teachers sensed that the West was a vast potential Buddha field where young people might take up Zen practice without the resistance and cultural barriers of Soto Zen in Japan. Of particular interest to this first generation of teachers was a desire to instill the importance of Zazen meditation and the Bodhisattva way. Zazen, while still regarded as being at the core of Zen in Japan, was little practiced outside of the monk's training temples and thus largely unpracticed by members of the lay Buddhist community. Furthermore, many early Soto masters who came to the States agreed with the sentiments expressed by Shunyu Suzuki Roshi that the true purpose of the Bodhisattva way to help others and to help ourselves was missing in Japan. The opinion was that the balance of practice in Japan had led to Zen practitioners losing their way, focusing too much on helping others towards enlightenment while neglecting their own practice. For these reasons, Soto Zen centers in America, many of which are led by active members of the Soto Zen Buddhist Association, stress meditative practice in the form of Zazen, as well as the 16 Bodhisattva precepts. A well-known Buddhist precept is the concept of impermanence, which holds that all things originate, have duration, and decay. I would propose that this is true not only for corporeal forms, but can be seen in the very practice of Buddhism itself. Soto Buddhism in America is no exception to this rule, and while in some regards it mirrors the practices common in Japan, 
In other aspects, it has diverged in response to the societal needs of its newer Western practitioners. While the inclusion of women in the priesthood, the increasing appeal to minority groups and underprivileged members of society are all distinctive markers of Soto Zen in America, a very noticeable marker of American Soto Zen is in the fluidity of the lines dividing laymen and ordained priests. In large part, this is due to a vastly different cultural environment in which ordination does not provide one with a clear set of responsibilities or livelihood. The Soto Zen Buddhist Association has laid out guidelines for training Soto Zen priests in the West, which stress many key components equally important in Japan, including movement through several stages of ordination, a consistent Zazen practice, having a solid understanding of the Buddha Dharma, being well-versed in ceremonies and rituals, and being supportive of the Sangha as a whole. While the training required to receive Dharma transmission and become a fully ordained priest in America strives to remain true to its Japanese roots, the path taken following ordination may be very different, as Soto priesthood in the United States is not synonymous with a teacher's path. Instead, the teacher's path is but one of many routes one may choose to go, including focusing on scholarly pursuits, social activism, and even continuing employment as anything from a taxi driver to a therapist. For this very reason, it is no surprise that Zen has had a cultural influence beyond its small numbers, as the priesthood is largely intertwined with members of society that may have no connection to Buddhism whatsoever. Specifically, the tendency for American Soto Zen priests to involve themselves in social activism has great impact and has become a way in which they can express their bodhisattva vows. Certainly there was, this would gladden Shunru Suzuki Roshi, who emphasized that to be a Buddhist does not mean just to practice Zazen in a nice calm building like a hermit. Wherever we are, to help others without losing our practice is the Mahayana Bodhisattva way. A further distinctive attribute of American Soto Zen is found in the ability of laymen to achieve a level of recognition that places the midway between the stage of head student and full Dharma transmission. This is achieved via a process referred to as Dharma entrustment or lay recognition, which serves as an affirmation of a student's strong practice and good understanding and allows them to teach classes or lead lay groups under the more casual supervision of a Dharma-transmitted priest or teacher. An argument could easily be made that this additional lay lineage was established in America as priesthood training tends to be much lengthier in the United States. In Japan, monks can move through the stages of ordination in a period of time as short as four to five years, while in contrast, this accelerated timeline is not common in the States, and there are generally many long years between the stages of ordination. This means that often Dharma transmission is not received until one is in his or her 40s or 50s. This circumstance also means that while Soto Zen continues to attract more followers, a need for more rigorously trained priests is also needed. The capitalistic, materialistic, and fad-loving cultures that are apparent in America provide the future of Soto Zen Buddhism with some very specific challenges. Already, the word Zen has spread across the states with most lacking a comprehensive understanding of the term. Instead, it is often used as an advertising gimmick or in casual terms, which don't pay homage to a dedicated and lifelong practice. The challenges of materialism again come into play as American culture seems to demand that Buddhists write books and advertise the retreats widely with graphic depictions of blissful students and calm, resolute teachers. Essentially, the American public is asking to be sold on Buddhism or sold on the happiness that it offers. This is a difficult prospect as consumerism and Buddhist teachings do not go hand in hand. In traditions such as Soto Zen, where community, the relationship between teacher and student, and strong dedication to the bodhisattva path are of utmost importance, 
It is likewise difficult to emphasize the entirety of this practice when expectations are simply of peaceful people sitting in the lotus position. Additionally, Soto Zen Buddhism faces the challenge of reaching out to communities beyond the privileged European-American practitioners who predominate in Zen centers today. Indeed, this has already begun to happen, with an increasing number of centers being opened by people of various ethnicities and economic status. This echoes the truth that the Buddha spoke against castes and classes, holding that liberation and enlightenment was open to all. Given the history of racism, classism, and other inequality in America, the appeal of Soto Zen and Buddhism in general should only continue to grow in the coming years. Undoubtedly, as more American-born priests become the transmitters of the Soto lineage in the United States, aspects of the tradition will continue to adapt in response to the changing times. However, the hope is that with diligent practice, study, and teaching, it will remain true to its roots and flourish far into the future.